So today I'll be counting down every single MCU film. There's 22 of them. And I'll be seeing what the critics think of these films. So from worst to best. And I'll be using Metacritic to use this. Which is basically a score of which aggregates um, critics reviews. So we're using that. So first up here is Thor The Dark World, which um, most of people consider quite an outlier in the MCU just because uh, it doesn't really, doesn't deliver like the other films, so I can understand why they put it here, but nonetheless it is a good film, it's just like every other Marvel film, which is maybe nowhere near as good as the other entries. Next up is a tie between Iron Man 2 and Thor. Um, they're both really good films in my opinion, it's just... Maybe Iron Man 2 had a lot to live up to, obviously the first one being very good. And Thor was kind of a bit different to the other films, and it was harder to work with a new world and stuff. But I both think they're good films, and they just slip under like the mainly positive category, which is quite sad, but good films. Next up is The Incredible Hulk, which, um, to be honest, when I was watching it, it was kind of boring to and a bit of a struggle to like keep up with the characters but uh, at the end it was satisfying and a great film and I I think the action scenes really saved it for this one because uh, plot wise I think it might have been a little weak and some of the it was very different to a lot of the other Marvel films but nonetheless like I said before good films all of them are good films. Next up is Iron Man 3, which is kind of odd because I actually found this film really good and I think it maybe in ways um, is worthy to equal the first film. But a lot of people are, um, think it's uh, quite weak and actually I prefer Iron Man 2 because, I don't know, it, it is a bit obscure. But I like the villain, I liked all the twists and I thought it was a really good film. I'm a bit surprised it was this late on the list. Next up is Ant-Man. A lot of people like this one because it was quite funny and definitely more light-hearted than a lot of the films and it was a bit of a break from previous films as this one wasn't really an end of the world if the hero doesn't fail one but still pretty good and I just, I liked it. It has, 64 is pretty low compared to most of the films here but definitely a good film would recommend. Captain Marvel is next up on the list and I kind of disagree with this one. I found this film the weakest in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because, I mean, there was nothing really creative about it or new. It was pretty basic, seeing that plot twist, and I felt like the beginning of the film was quite weak for me. But nevertheless, some people enjoyed it. Nick Fury was very good in this film, or Samuel L. Jackson, so I think that is why it got a score of 64. Next up is Captain America, the first Avenger, which I thought I wouldn't like because it's set in wartime and I'm not really a big fan of the whole war setting, but it did work. And it is the lowest rated Captain America, but I personally felt that the Captain America series got better as it went along. So for that reason, I thought this was a great film. Next up with just a slightly higher score is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Many consider this film to be um, not as good as its predecessor, but I personally felt that it was better and I liked how they explored Quill's backstory a little bit and I liked the addition of Mantis, but then again I've watched this one more recently than the first Guardian film, but definitely a great film and I can sort of see why the film has got this score of 67, which is pretty good. Next up is Avengers Infinity War, which got 68. Now, I kind of agree with this, because it was definitely nowhere near as good as Endgame, which is higher up on the list, I can already tell you. And I just personally felt that, yeah, I get it, it was leading up to Endgame, but there was no sense of victory achieved, and for that reason, I mean, you can't really say the film was bad, but it definitely had nothing that you could look up to. In fact, the film ended on a, like, no hope, how are we going to get this now, which some people liked, but I was just like, a bit annoyed at the film and was like really hoping that we would get some sort of win for the good guys. Next up was Avengers Endgame which was the classic team up of all the six main Avengers. It was a great film, Loki was brilliant and the battle in New York was top notch. I mean probably almost as good as the battle in Endgame which I'm not going to say what it was but if you watch it you know how cool that was. But yeah definitely a great solid Avengers film. 
and probably better than Age of Ultron and Infinity War in my opinion. Now Ant-Man and the Wasp, which pretty much everyone says was better than the first Ant-Man and was really good. I like the addition of the Wasp. The film was pretty decent as well and a solid film. And this is actually tied with another film, which um, I'll be very proud if you guess it, but it is a Captain America film. And it is The Winter Soldier, which some of you may have expected, and the first Russo Brothers film, and arguably their work got a bit better, if we just take out Infinity War. And, I mean, this film was really good. Um, Bucky was probably the best performances I've ever seen, also in Civil War, that she was really good. And I liked how Black Widow was one of the main characters for a lot of the film, and the addition of the Falcon. The Russos get really lucky and get to introduce loads of cool characters, and this film was really good. I actually rewatched it a couple of days ago. I didn't realise how cool it was and Nick Fury and Shield being infiltrated. Now a small jump to Spider Man Homecoming with a score of seventy three. I really liked this film. It was very humorous. The villain I thought was really, really good, had a good motive. I also felt Tom Holland was really good. I personally think he's the best Spider Man. I also did like Spider Man I made Spider Man two, but not many people did like that. It was also a bit less um, heavy, at lighter stakes, which I think is always good because it's, you know, friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. Really good. Next up is Thor Ragnarok, which is an insane in improvement from the first two Thors. And let me just say, this is probably my favourite tied with Endgame. It is just so funny. The plot was pretty good and we really got to see a proper evolution of Thor and the completing his arc. But what, it was just amazing. I remember laughing a lot in the cinema and definitely I've watched it a lot of times on DVD because it was just oh, amazing. Now we've got Captain America Civil War with a score of 75. This film was really, really intense and insane. I really like the, the division between the Avengers which really set things up for Endgame and then, or Infinity War I should say, got concluded in Endgame. But the villain also was really good. Again, Helmut Zemo had a good incentive this time. And it was more of an Avengers film, but nonetheless a good Captain America film. And finally, we've seen it somewhere on this list, the first Guardians of the Galaxy film. This brought in Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, Rocket, Groot, Yondu. It was, and also we saw about the Power Stone. And that really set things into play with the whole Infinity Saga. Had a bit of Thanos and Nebula as well. Really funny. Love the music choice as I did with the second one. And this is one of those slightly funnier Marvel films but always deliver. And I'm looking forward to the third one. I can't believe it's only at number three. We have Avengers Endgame. Which is why I said my favourite other than maybe Thor Ragnarok. I mean, Incredible cast, it was very emotional, wrapping up everything. It just could not have been executed more perfectly. And they had Korg in it, which was the most important thing. If you've got Korg, then what can go wrong? I mean, he's the best character in the world. I could, I could talk about Korg all day, honestly. Let's move on to the next one. Now, it would be good if the Iron Man film, the first film in the MCU, would be the highest ranked. But it's not, it's actually second. Well, I'll tell you what first is in a minute. Iron Man was a really solid film. There were so many memorable bits, like when he's at a press conference, he gets a cheeseburger, and like when he escapes from the cave, and how he really puts weapons aside. I mean, that was the first time we saw Tony Stark not being selfish. The first time we saw Tony Stark, in fact. But yeah, this really set things into play, and we wouldn't have got this far without it. Now we've got Black Panther, deemed a must-see film, even though most of the films on this list should be a must-see. I think Black Panther is number one with a much higher score of 88, which is insane. It's because of like the racial aspects and how I think it really appealed and it was pretty good to see uh, an African sort of tribe and it was it was really good. I felt the villain was also really good, but number one on this list, here's the thing. I mean, it is good as a film on its own, but compared to a lot of other Marvel films, like we've got Captain America Civil War, we've got Avengers Endgame, these are all tie-in films, but then if you look at films on their own, like Ant-Man and the Wasp or Iron Man, these are probably better films than Black Panther, but 
nonetheless, Black Panther was solid. I mean, it did have a lot of good parts. I mean, we saw Black Panther develop. But if I had to rank number one, it would be Avengers Endgame. Just because it doesn't involve political correctness or anything, it was just a really great film. But Black Panther is good. It's probably definitely higher up in the list.